Hello, a lot, Pokemon trainers, and happy holidays. Professor Chaz here, the lab coat's on back order, and welcome back to our Pokemon Moon playthrough on part number 32. In the last episode, we started making our way down route number 12 to try to access the next area, the Tapu Village, where I think our next trial is going to be a ghost type trial, and we dealt with some trainers along the way, did a little bit of chatting about Team Skull and different ideas we have with those guys, and we came down here to the secluded shore. There's not much more for us to do here for the moment, but I have noticed that if I activate Charizard Glide, we can fly pretty close back to this area right here. So what I want to do is what I mentioned I was going to do in the last episode. I'm going to go check out some other things that we have sort of like skipped over for the time being. And for example, I think we're going to go back to Akala Island. We didn't check out the Hano Grand Resort. There are some people we can talk to in there. And eventually, once we're done that, I want to go check out the Aether Foundation's VLFS once again. I noticed that we can access it again. And I just want to go back and see if there's anything there that we can do that we haven't done just yet. But as I say, first of all, we're going to fly back to the Grand Resort. Once we do land, we're going to take a look at the team. And I was showing off the Z-moves in the last episode. I said I want to save them for epic moments, but I kind of want to show off each one as it happens because I don't even know what they all look like, and I myself want to see what these Z-attacks look like. So first of all, of course, we're going to check out the team. What we're going to probably do is leave with Sonata so that we can use his special signature move, the uh, Oceanic Operetta. And first of all, let's check out each of the Pokemon. He is holding the Primarium Z right now. So, Sonata, our starter, Primarina. He is a careful Pokemon, boosting special defense, dropping special attack. Torrent ability, of course. The Primarium Z is the item, and Sparkling Aria, Aqua Jet, Echoed Voice, and Sing is the moveset. Next, we have Pandora, our Pancham at level 32, with a Calm Nature, boosting special defense, dropping attack. Vital Throw, Circle Throw, Slash, and Combat Punch for the moves. Mold Breaker is the ability, but I've said many times, I want to get an Ability Capsule to switch that to Iron Fist as soon as possible. And Phytinium Z, I forgot, i got to switch out some of the held items. Because I don't want to use the Z moves again until... Well, you know what? You never know when an Ultra Beast might suddenly attack. So, I might keep the uh, Z Crystals on for the time being. Anyway, next we have Icona the Sandy Gas, traded to me from my nephew. It is a serious Pokemon. I said it again. i got to remember the gender. Like, I see a pile of sand, and I don't think male or female for some strange reason. But anyway, he is a serious Pokemon. Water compaction ability, sharply boosting attack when he gets hit by a water move. Earth power, Shadow Ball, Mega Drain, and Shore Up is the moveset. I guess the reason water compaction makes sense is because when you get, you know, sand wet, it sol you know, solidifies and hardens into mud. I guess I never really thought about that. Anyway, next we have Dorothy, our Drift Blim. She is a quiet Pokemon, boosting special attack and lowering speed. She has the Unburdened ability, so I do want to probably switch her item, because she can't ever use or lose the Electrium Z. But if she uses or loses her held item, the Unburdened ability boosts her speed. And she is holding Electrium Z, we just want to check out the Gigavolt Havoc last time. Moveset is Hex, Gust, we got Thunder Wave back on her, and Minimize. Next is Cordial, our Sarina. She is a hasty Pokemon, boosting speed, dropping uh, defense. Queenly Majesty is the amazing ability that prevents priority moves from being used against her. And she used the Grassium Z last episode. I'll switch... I'll keep it for now. She has Trop Kick, Razor Leaf, Stomp, and Rapid Spin. Last but not least is Prowl, our Midnight Form Lycanroc. Quiet Pokemon with special attack up, speed down. Keen Eye ability preventing the loss of accuracy. Rockium Z which pulled off an amazing continental crush in that last episode. Rock Slide, Bite Counter, and Stealth Rock is the moveset. So, now that we are back here, I don't know if there's going to be any trainers to fight in the hotel, but if there are, we can check out the Oceanic Operetta. And I mentioned in the last episode, I might not be able to really show it off, because I've heard that the cutscene of the Z-Move is basically copyright claimed. And if it, if it worse comes to worse, I'll just show some like screenshots of it, I think. Would you like to show me how much your Pokemon have grown since joining your team? Sure. Which Pokemon should we show? Well, clearly the one that has grown the most would be Sonata, starting at level 5. 30 levels later, let's see what this man has to say about our Primarina. Looks like this Primarina was only at level 5 when you first met. Now it's level 35. That's some amazing growth. I can feel your deep love for your Pokemon. How do you grow together? By walking the same path with someone else. Let me give you this as a reward for showing how, showing me how far you two have come along together. Okay. So we get another ribbon here. Let's see what you have to say about Prowl then. Because Prowl already has the effort ribbon. And I forgot. Ikana is now maxed out in EVs as well. So I can go back and get the effort ribbon for him also. Now, give us the footprint ribbon. Decent growth. You've been real decent to it. Oh, come on. Alright, we'll come back here later for some footprint ribbons. Now... 
It used to be based off of friendship you get the footprint ribbon. Now it seems to be based on level growth. That'd be really sad if you capture a level, say, 99 Pokemon, if there was such a thing. What if it can never get the footprint ribbon? I wouldn't really like that. Meow. It's my solemn duty to teach a move to mythical Pokemon. Although I'm on vacation, I could teach a move to your mythical Pokemon. What do you say? We don't have any. But someday we will, I'm sure. Speak to me again if you change your mind. So what else is to check out in this amazing hotel? And what did we just walk in on? Would you just look at those biceps? They're bulging with strength. They're practically big enough to burst, like a Drifloon. And it bursts with its soul escaping with an amazingly pitiful, scary, whatever scream. I forget how the Pokedex said it. Can you imagine how far you'd be able to drive a golf ball with muscles like those? Muh. The Machamp seems uncomfortable. Should you stop them, you'll probably get dragged into a battle. Yeah, I kind of want a battle. I want to check out the uh, Oceanic Operetta. Uh, excuse you, what do you think you're doing? We hired this big fella to be our caddy. I'm right in the middle of something important right now, so how about you get out of my grill? Yeah, just get lost, would you? So things are a little bit weird in the Alola region. They've said, oh, it's a double battle. Golf buddies Tara and Tina, or Tara and Tina, or Tara and Tina, or Tara and Tina. I don't know. Or Corio or Corio. So let's see these electric flying Pokemon. Wait a minute. I had a feeling they have two different types. So I believe psychic flying and electric flying. Only level 25. So I'm kind of not too concerned about that. So what I want to do, I basically want to show off the Operetta. I might as well do it. This is taking forever. I th thought I hit it. All right. Let's just see what it says about Oceanic Operetta. The user, Primarina, specifically, summons a massive amount of water using its Z-Power and attacks the target with full force. All right. Let's do it. It hits one Pokemon. I thought it was going to hit everybody. Let's go with... Well, you know what? I'm going to go for the Psychic one because that's two, or two super effectives on Pandora as opposed to one electric super effective on Sonata, and Sonata has better defenses, so Sonata is going to take out the one that could hurt Pandora the most, while Pandora goes for... Let's just try the Comet Punch. Why not? All right. This is the stuff you might not be seeing. Hopefully you are. At least I'm getting to see it. Sonata surrounded itself with Z-Power, unleashes the full force Z-Move, the Oceanic Operetta. Again, hopefully you're watching this as it happens, and not just these little clips that I might be showing you. Not clips, but uh, screenshots. This is basically, if you can see it, a Spirit Bomb. And I've, I've said this before, these Z-Moves look like Dragon Ball Z attacks. Maybe that's why they're called Z-Moves. But, essentially, this is a Spirit Bomb. And take a bow, Sonata. So that is one... Species-specific Z-move fired off. And a level for Sonata. Now, I've heard the only other Z-move that is copyright claimed is, unfortunately... Ooh, Air Cutter. That hits both of us. That actually hurt a little bit. But uh, Eevee's Extreme Evo Boost is the other species-specific one that is basically claimed for copyright. So I don't think I'll ever be able to use it anyway. Oh, four! Nice! Not bad, Pandora. All right, let's finish up this Electric Oracory. I'll go with the Sparkling Aria. Oh, wait, that's going to hit uh, Prowl. Not Prowl, Pandora. That being the case... Well, Prowl... Stop saying Prowl, Professor. Pandora was slower. What I'm going to do... I'll go for an Aqua Jet on the Oracory, and I'll go for a Slash Attack on the Oracory as well. If the Aqua Jet doesn't knock it out... Pandora should survive another air cutter. Critical hit! Excellent job, Sonata! Don't get a critical air cutter. That would be just really, really mean. Woof! Alright. Hang in there, Pandora. You got this. Slash. Not bad at all. And another critical. You're not looking for praise? You're getting it, Pandora. You did it. Wonder what we have to clean off. Oh, so it's like that. The mystery is too deep. I think gonna be some lint, maybe? Yep. Whole bunch of lint. Comment right out of your fur there. I was concerned we might have lost Pandora there. The smartest thing, of course, would have been to switch, but I didn't. But we pulled through. I'm going to say probably a potion for Pandora, though. 
as a reward for doing so well. All right, leave the Machamp alone, you two. Come on, it didn't ask for this. What is up with you? I know, right? Just totally killed the mood. I'm glad I killed whatever mood there was going on between you and this Machamp. Let's just go. I did it. You're free. Yes, flex. Jeez, you little. What was that, huh? You trying to be a hero or something? Rotom, are you translating this for me? What'd you go and do that for, huh? I'm not a Pokemon. I'm a born and bred human being, duh. This is just a costume. Like, seriously, dude, are you just here to ruin my day? Going and blowing all the hard work that I put into disguising myself as a Machamp caddy? I was just going to make some real bank off this job. And then, you had to come along and try to rescue me. Man, I want to cry right now. But I just know you were trying to help. I can't get mad for what you did, so here, just take this. Oh, he must have used it on himself because he's a Pokemon. Wait, he's not a Pokemon! Oh well. Now get lost, and don't you talk to me again. I'm going to, because I actually have a very important question for you. You're a person, in a costume. How are you moving all four arms? No, oh, I told you not to talk to me. Alright then. Isn't that a good question, though? How exactly is he moving? the two upper arms. Or, if those are his actual arms, how is he moving the two lower arms? I don't know. Pokemon are weird. And so are people. Alright, Pandora, let's restore you with a super potion. And once we're done here in the Grand Resort, we can go and check out the VLFS, see if there's anything new going on there. I don't think we'll be able to really do too much there. For all I know, maybe another Ultra Beast is going to show up. <laughs> ruff, ruff. Hey there, trainer. You can call me Future. People call me the sound-making machine that... Let me start this again, because I don't think this makes sense. People call me the sound-making machine that can make the hits off of the not-so-distant future. Or hits of. And this here beside me is my partner, Hit. <laughs> Puppy Pokemon can be pretty scatterbrained, always barking up the wrong tree at things. But you can't beat their beautiful cries. <laughs> See? Thanks to this clever girl and her lovely voice, writing new songs is as easy as pie. I know I probably don't even need to ask, but you've heard of me before, right? <laughs> Never have or not till today. Um, uh, I'll do that. That's kind of more my tone of way of speaking. You know, oh, not until today. Whoa, that is bad news for you, friend. You are clearly behind on the times. Yeah, it's like I'm not in the future. I guess I'll make sure people know who I am. If not through songs, then through battle. I'm fine not knowing you. No, oh, alright, we'll battle. That's the tune I've been waiting to hear. I hope you're ready to face future. I'm always ready for a sight to the future. If you watch Pokemon Sapphire over the weekend. Was it this weekend? Maybe last weekend. I think it was last weekend. Yeah. Future sight is mean. Trumbeak. We've seen this thing before. We're leading with Cordial, though, which is not the best. I wonder, could she actually defeat this, though? We are five levels above, but she's not at full HP. I'm going to switch into our... Well, Sandy Gas wouldn't do too much either. I guess. Sonata comes back in. I got to switch the item, though. I don't want to use the Oceanic Operator again. Like, Basically, I'm going to wait and see how this video goes. If I have to cut out the cutscene, I'll know that I can't reliably use Oceanic Operator as far as the video playthrough goes. I can do it off-camera, I suppose, but... I'm not going to use the uh, Oceanic Operator again. Maybe. I don't know. I shouldn't say I won't, because what if I'm facing a very powerful opponent and... Way to go, Sonata! Critical! But what if I'm facing somebody that I actually need the added power for, and I don't want to limit myself? Uh, did you just get 666? Anyway. Cordial is an Aromatic Mist. I think this is a new move. Let us see what this does. It's fairy. No damage, okay. The user raises the special defense stat of an ally Pokemon. Okay, so you help your teammate by using Mysterious Aroma. Uh, hmm. I guess we don't really need Razor Leaf if we have Trop Kick. I'm going to learn that. That could come in handy in double battles. Interesting. So it's a way to boost your teammate. It's almost like Acupressure. Well, Acupressure is random, but you can still have to use it on your teammate to boost stats. Wait, your name was Robert, not... Was it Robert? Did I say that right? Ding, ding, ding! You're not future at all. You're like the past, man. At least we passed you. Would you look at that hit? This trainer is amazing! I think I've thought of my next future hit melody thanks to that battle. Rock! 
Look at that! Even Hit is getting excited. She's normally so laid back about everything. Let me give you a little present to thank you for this dose of inspiration. Metronome! Yes, we can perform any attack we want! Wait, no. That's a held item, not a TM. That metronome right there is a key tool if you hope to capture the song in the future. Wait a minute. Sudden random thought. I don't know how to use it for battling, though. You'll have to tune into that one for yourself. So, metronome, as we're about to see, is a held item that powers up if you use moves over and over, the same one. And that can be held by a Pokemon. It boosts moves used consecutively, but only until a different move is used. I'm going to give that to our Echoed Voicing Sonata. Echoed Voice itself powers up if you use it over and over. The metronome should add even more power to that. Kind of curious to try that out in battle now. But what else is there to check out in this grand resort? Nothing over this way. There's somebody here, though. Would you look at this thing? It totally looks like an Oddish, right? Yeah, it actually kind of does. A blue pot with the uh, leaves coming out. Whether it's your golf swing or your battle skills, it's hard to improve without a bit of guidance. I've been learning so much about my game from Miss Kahili. She is a real golf pro. I remember in the demo, they refer to this Kahili person, which I don't... We haven't met her, have we? Not that I can recall. I can't read signs, what? The owner of the Handel Grand Resort is a great golf fan, and his daughter, Miss Kahili, is a world-class golfer herself, and a real strong trainer, too. She wouldn't be a kahuna, would she? We welcome you gladly to the grandiose Hano Grand Hotel. Oh, I see there's a golf course right in back, and you see, like, the, the green? That's cool. I can't make any recommendations on behalf of the hotel, but I can tell you this. Whatever type of Pokemon that your Pokemon are weak to, you should have other Pokemon on your team that are effective against that type. That is... Basic Pokemon Battling 101. Oh, I didn't speak to these people in the seat yet. Listen, kid, if you don't throw common sense out the window, sometimes you'll never be able to discover anything new. Try everything out. Different abilities, moves, items. That's how you make a breakthrough. A good Pokemon will listen to what others think around it, and then discover its own mind. The same goes for a good woman, too. Or a man. Come on, let's not be elitist here. I'm the hotel detective for this establishment. But the people in Alola are so easygoing that nothing troublesome ever happens around here. There's nothing for me and my Kadabra to do. Well, you could critical side beam my Marsh Stomp. Wait, no. That was Pokemon Silver. Spoilers, if you haven't seen that yet. This is like the uh, last person to speak to, I think. So land its poisonous gas smells as sweet as any flower. But breathe it in and you're done for. I tried watering it down to use it in perfume, but I'm not having any luck. My clients keep dying for some reason. Doesn't sound like a very lucrative line of work. So, we're done with this. We're now going to hop on good old Charizard and check out the VLFS just to see is there anything new that we can... We can't even fly there. So let's head to Ula Ula Island and continue our story. You must have to... Can you take a boat there? I'll try that in another episode or next time I reach a port and see if we can sail over to uh, the Aether Foundation. You think you'd be able to fly? Oh well. You know what we could probably do if we were smart is heal, but I'm not going to. Let's go ahead and mudsdale our way down. So, before reaching the flag, which is pretty much just right up ahead, I'm going to surf around using Lapras down on the uh, beach, see if there's anything out in the water, like a fishing location or whatever. Watch out for all the slowpoke. Alright, Lapras, let's find some stuff. Possibly. Possibly not. I don't want to go too fast. I want to make sure I don't scare away any of the bubbles. Oh, there's some bubbles. Come on. Give me an item this time. As I'm sure you're aware, prism scales are used to evolve Feebas into Milotic. Now, this was a curiosity that I had. So, when Gen 5 came around, they basically did away with the concept of contest, and you couldn't even really... Well, you couldn't gain ribbons, so your Pokemon data screen didn't have a section for ribbons. And, of course, that's because you couldn't earn any ribbons in-game. Not even for beating the Elite Four, which I really didn't like. I like getting ribbons on my Pokemon to signify all the different regions that they've been from, or been through. And the fact that we can't signify that we have beaten the Unova League kind of leaves a bad taste in my mouth, you know? So, anyway, that's Gen 5. More complaining about that. I'll get to that at some point. I think i got to switch the Pokemon around. But... When you uploaded Pokemon from previous games, it would keep their ribbons that they had, so you could actually still see them. But my question was, why, like, you know, how exactly would uh, Feebas still evolve? Because you didn't have your contest attributes anymore. So in the previous game, Gen 3 and Gen 4, Feebas had to have maxed out beauty to evolve up into Milotic when it leveled up. 
Now, since they didn't have the attributes in Pokemon Black and White, my question was, you know, how do you evolve a Feebas? And of course, they introduced a new hold item that you could evolve Feebas while trading, that being the Prism Scale. But I was curious, what if you maxed out a Feebas's stats, or beauty, in a previous game using the Poffins or the Pokeblocks? If you sent it up to Gen 5... Wait, I'm getting ahead of myself. In Gen 6, when I sent my Pokemon up to the Kalos region, I noticed... Or no, technically the uh, Hoenn region in the remakes of Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire. I noticed it retained their attributes for contests. So my Arbok was the first one I looked at. He still had all of his attributes kind of not maxed out, but really high. That made me realize that the Pokemon data going into Gen 5 and then further into Gen 6, it retained that contest information. So I thought, what if you get a Feebas's Beauty maxed up, then send it to Gen 5, if you level it up, would it still evolve into a Milotic? I don't know, I never actually tried that, but it was a curiosity I always had. If anyone out there knows, leave a comment and let me know how that would have worked. Route 13, one last oasis before the Desert Sands. Or the Desert Papyrus, perhaps. Chaz! I heard the news from Sophocles! You helped him out with that, with testing... You helped him out with testing Dakin, yeah? That totem calling machine or whatever? Is that what it was called? I don't even remember that. I guess I was test subject number two, but I managed to get through the trial. Maybe even managed to get a bit stronger, eh? Here, Chaz, I want you to take this. My battling skills. Nope, he's giving me a cool item. Oh, he wants to heal me up because he wants to fight me. You only have one volume, don't you? Haven't you ever heard the expression that silence is golden? Like my hair. Yeah, he's back. Listen. Team Skull is looking for a Pokemon called Cosmog. Cosmog? Hmm, I have no clue what that is. I'll have to ask my friend Nebby about that. Nebby, who is not Cosmog. Do you two know anything? What? Not that we tell you! So you do know something. Thanks, Hal! Poker face, right there. Look, Cosmog isn't even a strong Pokemon. But it has the potential to summon Pokemon so terrifyingly strong that you don't even know. If something like that happened, it would be a disaster for Alola. A disaster? Like, a real disaster? Then what are we supposed to do about it? Protect it! If you do know where Cosmog is, or if you do find anything out, just keep it safe. I know I might be working for Team Skull right now, so you may not trust me or care, but I'm going to tell you this just once. You have to protect Cosmog no matter what. This is giving me chills. Like, what? I don't understand what's happening. It's like, okay, he's not a villain, really, this guy. He dresses like it, but... I still don't even understand how Team Skull found out about Cosmog in the first place. They have? They haven't even mentioned it. What do you mean? No matter what, you're just gonna leave us hanging? Smell you later. Chaz, if they're really gonna... If they're really looking for Cosmog, then... Is Lily going to be okay? Well, how Team Skull's not that strong. Of course, she's not a trainer, though. I don't really get what's going on, but we've got to just... We've just got to keep both of them safe, right? Then I know what I'm going to do. Take on my next trial so I can get even stronger. Oh, no. Don't go look for Lily or anything. Sure. I'm going to complete my island challenge, and I'm going to get Tapu Koko to recognize my strength. Then I'm going to be the next island kahuna. I want to make sure more and more people can have fun battling to see who wins or loses. Chaz, let's both try to become real champions. Did you get that speech from Kakui as well about the League? So yeah, like... Gladion. Does Topper Village have something to do with THE Topper? The Guardians of the Islands? I'm gonna assume so. Gladion, what is his deal? I don't really understand. What kind of terrible trainer leaves a sweet Pokémon like that behind? What? What happened? What did I miss? That Pokémon in the next guest room has been waiting for his trainer forever. What?! This is terrible! I don't even know who this is. Come here, you. Who are you? You need help? Oh, Stuffle! Eh. What can we do to help? Can we access anything in here? Come on. This is sad. You don't leave your Stuffle behind. What's on TV? It's a Malasada commercial. The Mythic Malasada. Yay! I love these. Tell you what. Let me take a nap. Oh, I can't even take a nap. Oh, I don't like stuff like this. I can't do anything to help Stuffle. Look how cute he is. Look at him hopping around. Look at it. Oh. Ah. 
If I stay here long enough, will he come back? Probably not. I'm gonna have to check in on this guy. The uh, beach down below, they said new stuff washes up every day, so I guess I can come back and check on stuff and just see. That should be 32. Let me just see if I've been keeping track of that properly. 32 Zy Zygarde cells, I think. Whoops. Whoops. Where is it? Let's check. 34! I'm way behind. Well, by two. Who would leave Stuffle? Such a cute little guy. Hi, yo, Mudsdale! Away! I like to pretend that I'm like that hero I used to love when I was a kid. That is the Lone Ranger. I'm pretty sure. If you don't know what I'm talking about. Wait a minute. Hang on. There was a hidden item on the beach. I don't think I can access it, though. All right, let's head to this nice oasis. Actually, there's a little spot down here by the shore we can go to as well. Grab myself a moonstone. I had a sunstone in the last episode. What is that? Looks like just water bubbling up. Oh, and there's a spinda. Spin, spin. It's living in a desert. What? Is, well, it's living in a desert like the Haina Desert or Haina Desert that makes you appreciate the value of an oasis. And it's all. And it's the. I can't read. And it's the weaknesses of different types of. And it's the weaknesses of different types that really make you appreciate different Pokemon. There we go. So, oh, I didn't even see this here. Okay, number 35. We're about halfway there, only not quite. That's actually about a third of the way. Trainer tips. Have you seen numbers on the Festival Plaza icon on the X menu on your lower screen? I've seen that a few episodes back. It shows how many people are currently connected via local wireless communication. Okay, now I get you. All right, let's grab ourselves an item. It is a guard spec. Let's fish ourselves up something from the water. It is bubbling. I don't want to scare them away. We got a Prism Scale last time. This time we get a Pokemon. Don't be a Magikarp. Okay, it's not a Magikarp. It's a Wishy Washy. Are you worth the experience? Not at all. We're going to leave you be. So I still, like my nephew explained to me what the schooling ability does. I'm still not quite sure, but I think it's like when Wishy Washy hits a certain level, if it goes down below half HP, it then triggers the schooling to become the school form. You watch, I'm going to fish up every last water type Pokemon that lives in Alola's seas. That's called uh, extinction, if you get rid of them all. So we have a trailer parked over here. Can we go into it? Probably not. I'm checking, mashing the A button for a door. Nope, it's there for show. Okay. Anything in the barrels? Probably not, no. We got a punk over here. What, you got a problem, short stuff? I can stand guard even while I'm squatting. Stand guard on what? What is this place? So you're actually Team Skull. You're not just some punk dressed up. There are some books on the table. One is called The History of the Island Kahunas. Oh, I thought she was talking to me. Okay. You can't know who will get named a kahuna or not, youngin, until they are chosen. Even humans sometimes have to live at the whim of some capricious ca capricious Pokemon. Yeah, they said the uh, kahunas, no, the, uh, the tapus choose the kahunas. Team Skull was born out of this old group that once formed around one of the old kahunas. But that whole thing fell apart after they got smacked down by the wrath of the tapu. And I can't use the bathroom? I guess I'm okay with that, though. So why is there a Team Skull? Actually, you're Team Skull also. Why are you guys just hanging out here? And we have a random Oranguru hidden behind the side here. Oh, 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 oh. Oranguru. So, do we go up to the desert next? I don't even know. What, what the heck do you think you're doing, huh? Did someone say you could come in here? N not that I'm doing anything in here. I haven't done anything. You want to scrap? Yeah, let's fight. <laughs> Why not? What? What? Uh, no, no, I, I, I ain't got time for you. I just peek you silly anyway. Not worth it. So, so I'll, I'll just leave you with this. Use it to train up and come back when you're worth my time. Thanks for the Macho Brace. Oh, never mind. TM12 Taunt. I'll take that too. Wonder what Z Taunt would do. So, I had a feeling he wasn't going to fight me. I thought I'd get rid of you. Go on and train if you want to. If you if you want to bug me or whatever you're saying. What are what are? The desert is like a different place every day because the winds are always moving the sand. And somewhere in that confusing mess lie the ruins of abundance. Maybe Tapu Bulu just wants to be alone. So we know where the next Tapu is. I guess we don't really need to go up here yet. I can talk to some people though. I'm going to do that of course. And then I'm going to see how far up there we can go. The Haina Desert is like nature's own maze. But they say you can find your way through if you keep a close eye on those stone stacks. Someone once said the answer is 2143, but what is that supposed to mean anyway? I like puzzles, I'll figure this out. Probo pass. You shall not probo pass. I guess we can't probo pass yet. 
the Haina Desert, and as we said, it's blocked off. Greetings, trial goer. I'm afraid this is a captain's barricade. Only those who pass the ghost type trial can come through here. Holy world, get out of here! Alright, will do. I guess we are going to head to that flag location down on the map. Now, what I like is this gains us access to a place called Tapu Village, and I believe that is getting us closer to the point that I can add another Pokemon to the collection that I've been waiting for ever since the trailers were coming out. We're here in Tapu Village. Rock rough. I thought that was a kid for, for, uh, from the behind for a second. Tapu Village. The village was named that because the Tapu appeared here to protect Mount Lanikila, which reaches up so close to both the sun and moon, so it's not version specific. But that's all that's left to it now. All that's left to it now is the name. Oh, so these are all like just destroyed shells of houses, yeah. Hmm. Well, this is the uh, location, though. How is waiting for us. Phew! Look, Chaz! Seems like we're almost to the Aether House, where the captain's supposed to be, huh? Is that where they said they'd be? I don't even remember. Hey, look! Construction workers! That must be what Kakuli was talking about! So they're really making a Pokemon League up on top of Mount Lanakila. The professor told me that the Pokemon League... Pokemon Leagues in other regions have four crazy strong trainers in them that they call the Elite Four. The Elite Four in our island kahunas. I wonder which ones are stronger. I can't wait to find out. It's going to be interesting, for sure. Aether House? Is it another part of the Aether Foundation? Because I'll eat my decks if it's not. That, you are the decks. I can't go there? Come on. The Alola Pokemon League is currently still under construction. Aww. Oh, but the Icy Mountain is where I can find certain Pokemon. Alola. We have our ride Pokemon here to help us move our heavy construction materials. Can you summon one to my ride pager, please? We're going to make an awesome league here, so you better become an awesome trainer. So I guess this... Well, this is a Pokemon Center. So we're going to heal up. Where is the Aether House? Oh, I'm going to go down. I think they said that's where one of the... Uh, a trial site is. They said it's an ancient trial site. That makes sense. It might be the ghost one. Look at this Grimer hidden behind in the corner. I'm pointing at my screen like you can see it, but you can see it on screen. There we go. Let's talk to that Grimer. What's he up to? He's going to steal some Poke Beans from this guy. I haven't had a drink in a while. Let's do that too. Drain. All right, let's grab a drink here at the coffee shop. It's zero o'clock. We've given 273 beans. Let's get a present of a rare candy. Again, money. I can sell that. I should probably buy some items while I'm here too. Uh, let's get ourselves... Let's go for the nice standard classic of Tapu Coco. I love that. Look at our cash too. What if they have any TMs here in this place? Here you are, one Tapu Coco just for you. It's our specialty. Did you know the the English word taboo may have its origins here in Alola? But I'm actually way too lazy to check whether that's true or not, though. By the way, are you using PokeFinder? It lets you capture all your unforgettable moments. It's so lovely that you can save all your precious memories forever. And we get a tea biscuit, we get the Lumios Gillette. I did notice back near the Battle Royal Dome, there was a spot I could do a Poke Finder, which I didn't notice the first time going through. I might want to go back at some point. Well, when I go back to get the ribbon, the effort ribbon, for Ikana, I can go ahead and find that Poke Finder spot again. You know how some Pokemon can steal HP from others with moves like Absorb and Mega Drain? Hand me the big root, please. Do you think it tastes different depending on the species of Pokemon they steal it from? That actually leads me to an interesting thing I want to talk about regarding the Dream Eater attack. Hey, do you have Haunter? Trade it for my Graveler if you have one. I want to see if the rumors are true about it. No. I'll be waiting. So you're actually getting a Lolan Golem from this guy, I'm assuming. No, yeah. Now, would a hiker be native to this region, or would he actually be touring? Would he have a standard Graveler? That would be kind of cool. If you can only capture a Lolan Graveler, for example, but if he gives you a standard Graveler, that would be pretty interesting to get a, like, a Kanto version Pokemon on your team. I always visit Pokepelago. You get lots of Pokebeans if you leave some Pokemon there to play. No TMs. But let's see what we can buy for items. We got plenty of Pokeballs. I'm gonna grab another 10 potions, another 10 super potions, I think. We got 25 of those. Let's grab 10 hyper potions. That's actually a lot of cash. Let's grab five hyper potions. I could also sell some stuff though. Oh, uh, we got plenty of healing items, I think. We're probably good with that. Let's get some adrenaline orbs. I actually have two. I could start using those. Okay, what can we sell off that I do not need? I'm gonna save all my key items, I think, is the best idea. Sell both these rare candies. I'm going to keep all of these. I think this is all the same stuff I've had before. Any items here we don't need? We can sell the Big Pearl. Not bad. Oh, I have more. Oh, I thought I only had one. Alright, so we sell those two. We got all this stuff. We have a regular Pearl. 
I just want to get rid of the blinking new thing. We've got three regular pearls. Sell all of those. And Comet Shard. That is just basically cash. Oh, it's 30,000. I thought it was 50,000. I think that's all. Yeah, we'll keep everything else. And of course, we'll keep all the TMs. Gonna keep all the berries. It is one of those berries that boosts a stat when they're in a pinch. Alright. Now, I was wondering, is there any way you can grow new berries in this game? And I don't seem to see that there are. But I forgot, Pokepelago has an island you can grow berries on. My nephew reminded me of that. I don't have enough Pokemon to access that island yet, but that's probably the first island I'm going to go for. We've got quite a few professors here in the Alola region, haven't we? There's Professor Kakui, Professor Samson Oak, Professor Chaz. Yeah, there's a plenty. Maybe it has something to do with the nice, calm climate we have here. You know that scientist guy named Colrus? Yeah, I'm familiar with his Pokemon TCG card. He was bragging to me about how his wearables are... His wearables are cooled with water so they stay comfortable. Maybe he means like what he's wearing, like his, his lab coat and stuff. Now, I don't even have a standard lab coat. This guy has a fancy one that actually cools as he walks. Come on, show off. Oh, that abandoned site? Yeah, it was overrun by ghost type Pokemon. If you went in there, you'd never come out again. Just like Alolan... Not Alolan Gengar, just like the Alolan Pokedex says for Gengar. If you see Gengar, give up. It's kind of messed up. People like to say that Tapu Gulu destroyed the supermarket in its rage, but that's not right. It's the people themselves who were to blame. What did they think would happen when they built a shop on land that's sacred to the Tapu? It's your thrifty Megamart, an oasis of saving, so spacious and gracious. What am I doing here? This seems kind of weird. Who am I leading with? I'm going to lead with my own ghost type. Actually, I've got two ghost types. I'm going to lead with both of them in case there's any sort of double battles that come along. Now, they say on the map... Oops, it's something about like the black sand here. I want to see what it says. An old route that leads to a trial site. Its beach is famous for its unique black sand. <laughs> the thrifty Megamart abandoned site. It's kind of a curious place. I'm interested to check things out here. Route 14, where the beach is covered in black sand. Now, I could surf out there, but I'll probably save that for later. I want to try to get to this Mega Mart and see what kind of deals they have. Another Zygarde cell, that should be 36, maybe? Oh, we got a trainer. Let's go. Looks like you've got a fishing rod made by Lana. Now, that's the only fishing rod I've gotten. Are there other ones? Other people make them? I doubt it. Fisherman Hisato to Pokemon. I've got a prism scale if you want one. I'll sell it to you for one million dollars. Actually, poke dollars. So, water type. Now, thing is, Feebas learns basic stuff naturally, but it can be bred to have certain moves. Plus, we are in the rain. So probably the safest bet. Let's switch into... I feel like letting the ghost types have their chance to shine in this episode because we're here on like the ghosty area. So let's go with that. Dorothy and Icona are gonna be the two main ones we use for this part. So you don't have the uh, Normalium Z, you could have gotten Z Splash. That's just... I'm just gonna Hex. I don't think a Feebass is gonna survive a Hex. Now either we're pretty slow or you've got Swift Swim. All right, it survived it. So I'm gonna go with a nice simple Gust Attack. You, okay, I was going to say, you must at least have Tackle by now, but I forgot. Well, we are ghost type, so you can't even hit us with that. Now, we're going to get to see the Milotic. No, but we see a Gyarados. And, of course, this thing can have Crunch. Hmm. What are our defenses like on Dorothy? 42 defense. No, we can't take a crunch. I was thinking of going for the Thunder Wave and Hex combo, but we're going to have to switch. Our best switch in, I'm going to say... Well, Cordial doesn't have the... Let me check your defense. I haven't really paid attention to your defenses after evolving. 64. I'm going to switch into uh, Cordial. Just and see how this goes. I shouldn't be risky like this. She has already been knocked out twice, and if she gets knocked out a third time, based on the rules I'm putting into this, I can't bring her back. Oh, you got Ice Fang. Fortunately, we're okay. That's going to be a switch once again, though, however, into Sonata. Let's go. 
And, you know, let's use the metronome echoed voice combo. Alright, water versus water. And they go for a dragon move on our fairy type on the switch in. Perfect move, Gyarados. Sure. Leer, that is kind of scary, but it's going to probably take more than that. Because what do you have? I'm expecting a water move. You got ice. You might possibly have a dark attack. I'm not sure, but we resist all of that. Now, all you can really do is leer me down. Leer, Twister, Ice Fang. I'm not too scared. I could voice level 2. Level 3 is a knockout. Try to heal this up. I'm interested to see what would happen. Nope. All right. Just going for Leer once again. Unfortunately, Gyarados, one of the most terrifying Pokemon of Gen 1, just can't stand up to the Gen 7 water starter of Primarina. Down it goes. Oh, we got to care for a bunch of Pokemon. Dorothy levels up to level 34, wants to learn Swallow. No, we're going to keep all... Well, what does the Z-Swallow do again? I forget. No, I think it was what my nephew was telling me Z-Stockpile heals as you boost your stats. Want to learn Spit Up? Oh, keep the old moves. Blah. All right, Hisato. If only I had a fishing rod made by Lana, I could win too. Well, all I've seen to catch really is Magikarp, so I wouldn't say that. Oh no! He's weak to water! But again, I said before, do you think it's like just any kind of water, or is it a focused water attack that Pokemon would be weak to? Anybody else need to be dried off? Yep. Dorothy. And looks like Cordial as well. Oh, you got a lot of the water on you. So was there anything else I was talking about that I could add more thoughts to? I don't think so. I think all of my focus and attention is being directed towards hair drying my Pokemon. As exciting as it is for you folks to watch out there. Oh man, Cordial's not having fun at all. She lost all her enjoyment. She must hate being wet. Well, we'll take care of everybody off camera afterwards. I'll probably go back to Pokepelago too. And I haven't done my Festival Plaza yet for the day too. So that could be some more EV training for these folks. I could also go get that Effort Ribbon for Ikana too. But I want to try to reach the supermarket and see just what is exactly happening here. Lana put her soul into the fishing rod she made. Er, don't you think that the rod is Lana herself? I haven't thought that once on my adventure. Because that is a little bit crazy. Okay, Cordial. Yeah, we're going to heal you. Let's grab a couple of potions. Make sure you are, you are back in fighting form. We've got so many healing items still. We keep getting berry juices from the Festival Plaza, one of the, uh, the treasure hunt things. So I don't think I'm ever going to be too short on healing items. But, of course, if things happen the way they happen against our first Ultra Beast... And if we get one hit KO, that's not going to help no matter how many healing potions we have. So I can barely make out what's on screen here. Well, there's the trial gate. And there's a trainer, apparently. I want rare Pokemon. I'll go anywhere due to my tenacity. I'm going to an abandoned supermarket. I am... I will admit. I am curious to see what we're going to find in there. Collector Kawika with a couple of Premier Balls. A Togedemaru. We haven't seen this thing yet. Electric and Steel, and we're leading with a Ground-type. I think that I'm okay with. Let's go for a nice... Oh, it's raining. You wouldn't learn water, would you? You can't learn water. That'd be crazy. That actually was a smart move. Alright, so Steel-type would resist Mega Drain, but you're not going to resist a Shadow Ball. Discharge. I don't mean to diss your discharge, but if that's all you got against me, come on. Magnet Rise fails. Do you not have a steel attack? Because you should at least be doing that to inflict some damage. And now we get the special defense drop. Come on, Icona, you're pulling through. Oh, you got you got spark and discharge. You gotta do some variety, some some diversity in your moves out there, buddy. You call yourself a Pokemaniac or you're a collector. The same thing, basically. And a Gabite. Dragon and Ground. So, I'm going to stay in. Our physical defense is pretty good. I'm going to Earth Power. You're faster? Of course you are. That hardly does anything. We can shore up. That was a critical hit, too. No, wait. You're using Sand Tomb on my Sand Castle? That is supposed to be Icona's signature move. That's just insult to injury right there, Gabite. You have to fall for that. Tell you what, you're taking a Shadow Ball. Fall to the ball. And we dodge that. Despite the fact that we're stuck in a Sand Tomb, we dodge the second one. 
And don't you think if Pokemon are asleep, they should have, like, lowered evasiveness? Because it doesn't make sense you can be asleep and still dodge a hit. I don't know. Icona hits level 33. Doesn't learn a new move, but that's all right. You'd be surprised how little I fixate on victory. I wouldn't be. I just beat you. Quite easily. All right, let's go ahead and dry off our Sandy Gast. I don't know when or how Sandy Gast evolves into Palo Sand. You know what I realized they could actually do at some point? They could make it so that new Pokemon could evolve using certain held items like... So, Metal Coat boosts the power of Steel-type attacks, right? But it also is if a Steel... or Sorry, if an Onix or a Scizor... Onix or a Scyther hold it, they evolve while being traded. Yeah, they could actually do that with, like, Sandy Gas. Like I say, if it levels up while holding Soft Sand, that could maybe make it evolve. Because they could do anything they want with evolutions. And they've done some pretty crazy things in the past. My nature as a collector gives me trouble. I can't travel to other islands until I've completed the Ula Ula Island Pokedex. You know, that's kind of short-sighted. You can catch some of these species on other islands, too. Abandoned site of the Thrifty Mega Mart. Designated trial site for the Island Challenge. Okay, so I see we have reached the Mart. Oh, wait, I, have, I see we have reached a Zygarde Cell. I'm going to talk to these people here. Oh, wait, okay, no, I'm going to finish up with... Wait, didn't I just hear something? Oh, I thought I heard a camera. The Poke Finder. I don't know what I just heard. I heard, like, a weird beep, beep, beep. Anyway, we'll talk to these folks. You know, I once saw a Pikachu that knew how to use the move Surf. That was back in Pokemon Stadium. I wish I could surf as half as good as that Pikachu. Was it named Pico? This old place is actually a trial site. I can't let you in unless the captain says it's okay. Also, we can't even go in here yet. So I guess... We can come up here. Can we access this? We can't. There's a way we can get up over the other side, though. But I think this is going to wrap things up. Oh, hi, Murkrow. Hang on. Murkrow! Murkrow? And... Murkrow. So how do we access this? We've got to find the captain. Where is she even at? If we go all the way back to the library. Well, we're going to come down here to the beach. We are going to save it up. Probably the next episode. What's that in the water out there? I'm probably going to check out the water in the next episode. Surf our way out to the island there, whatever that place is. And see if we can access the next trial for our ninth and halfway mark Z Crystal in the game. So it's looking like if this kind of time frame continues we're looking at possibly 30 or sorry 60 maybe almost 70 episodes for the full playthrough which is actually really cool and i like the fact that the game has so much content to it but with all that we are done for the day i want to say thanks for checking out today's episode feel free to leave a like down below if you enjoyed it and leave a comment based on what i was talking about any sort of feedback back and forth and any comments you have for what you want to see happening in the future of the playthrough and anything you've enjoyed along the way thus far. If you've missed any episodes, of course, as always, there is a link in the description to the full playlist, which you can check out and get caught up on all the adventures uh, thus far, so far, what I'm trying to say. And if you're not currently subscribed, on the outro, you'll see a link to subscribe. We're sitting at 990-some subscribers. Once we hit 1,000, I've been saying along the way many times, we're going to have some pretty cool giveaways coming up for Pokemon TCG here on the channel. And there's also some links in the outro for some other videos that I have done. You can check those out as well. But with that, we are complete. I want to say once again, thanks for checking out today's episode of Pokemon Moon. Professor Chaz is signing off. I'll catch you next time.